Stellantis has revealed it has new battery technology, which will revolutionize the small electric car segment. It's making some very big, some very bold claims about this new EV tech. Is it as good as they say? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. Just want to, just want to say a big shout out, big thank you to our Patreon supporters and YouTube members. If you want to become a YouTube member, you do get access to some of our videos a few days in advance. I'll put a link in the description below and also I'll put a link to our Patreon page as well. The idea here is Stellantis is trying to cut costs. They think that this new battery technology that they have developed will enable them to have EVs that they can make a profit on and sell at a price that's under 20,000 US dollars. I personally think that's pretty unlikely, but this new technology, if it does what Scientist says, will definitely make EVs more affordable. Now there's some key differences between this new battery pack from Stellantis that they say give it an advantage over other batteries. In fact, some real key differences, as in they can remove some parts of the car to make it lighter, more efficient, and more cost effective. It does sound actually quite remarkable to tell you the truth. Stellantis introduced an innovative battery that actually integrates the inverter and the charger functions. It's called the Intelligent Battery Integrated System or IBIS. This new system is the result of a four year collaboration between Stellantis and battery manufacturer SAFT or SAFT and 25 people from the French National Center for Scientific Research CNRS. According to Stellantis, integrating the inverter and charging functions has led to a new vehicle or stationary battery that claims to be more efficient, leading to more range at a lower price. The unit is said to be cheaper, more reliable, and the big news is the amount of space it frees up in the car. This is huge because EVs already have more space than compar comparable internal combustion engine vehicles. If you're improving the space even more, well, that's good news. Our journey to electrification is fueled by innovation and research excellence that uses the latest technology to address the real needs of our EV customers, such as range, roominess, and affordability, or reducing carbon footprint by improving efficiency, said Ned Surik, Stellantis' Chief Engineering and Technology Officer. This revolutionary battery system could mark a decisive step in Stellantis' commitment to provide useful, easy, and advanced, and advanced technology to everyone. So that's Stellantis' official statement, obviously. We don't really yet know if those claims will bear out in the real world. However, the team mounted the electronic conversion boards that perform the power and inverter charger functions as close as possible to the lithium ion battery cells. A new control system enables alternating current for an electric motor to be sent directly to the battery. To really understand the difference between this new system and existing batteries, Let's have a look at first how existing batteries work. AC power is sent to the charging system where it's converted to DC, which is fed to the battery. From the battery, the charge is sent to the inverter, which regulates the alternating current sent to the electric motor. IBIS removes the clunky inverter and charger from their normal position to free up space. The AC charge basically goes directly to the battery pack. The pack has three phase power generation and the modules operate entirely independently from each other. The next step for IBIS is building a fully functional prototype. So that's a little bit of a concern that they don't have that yet. A fully functional prototype vehicle that will be tested on Stellantis' test benches and tracks in the real world. Since this new battery technology is meant for smaller cars, Stellantis will use it for cars like the 500E, the Jeep Avenger, the new, five, the new crossover, smaller electric car, etc. IBIS will also be offered as a stationary battery pack solution to reduce costs. So basically a competitor to Tesla's Powerwall. The more they build, the lower the price will be to the end user, as is the case with any technology. Mass production reduces costs significantly. Of course, Stellantis is a big company, so that should be relatively simple to do. So who are this company that Stellantis have been working with? Well, Saft is actually a well-known battery solution supplier. They have worked in the segment for more than, they say, more than 100 years, providing vehicle and stationary battery solutions. Now, I can't actually 
um, confirm that that's true. However, they do supply the aviation, space, and military with stationary battery units. And they say that using an IBIS battery pack with a solar setup will enable you to go off grid at a fairly affordable price. A little bit like Tesla's home solar setup, but they say at a cheaper cost. Now, we don't know yet what the cost will be. They don't even know either. They don't have the final product, but that's what they're claiming they can do. On the automotive side, the size and weight of the IBIS system will definitely impact their electric cars. One of the main reasons why there's a general lack of small electric cars is weight, price, and packaging. A smaller body doesn't have enough space for all the parts required to make an EV run efficiently and effectively. Or really, it does have enough space, but a lot of companies are struggling to actually make it work at a price that is affordable. This means EV manufacturers have two options. They can either build an EV with a small battery pack with you know lower range, or they can build an EV which is well relatively small, like the Fiat 500e, which doesn't really have an advantage over its bigger rivals because it costs the same amount anyway. And I give you an idea of a small EV that doesn't really work because it's um, well not built efficiently. The Mazda MX-30. It has a range of only just over 100 miles, small battery pack, and you know it's relatively expensive. Ibis's new system should reduce the size of the in all the components going into an EV and the weight, therefore enabling them to put more batteries in at not too much more cost, giving more giving a smaller EV better range. So let's have a look at a quick look at comparing a lithium ion phosphate battery, the battery packs used for most small cars currently, to the Ibis system. Number one, battery chemistry. The Ibis battery is not specified in information that we have yet. We don't know exact details, but it is described as a new system that integrates the inverter and charger functions to improve efficiency in space and possibly cost as well. Lithium ion batteries are a specific type of lithium ion battery that use phosphate in the battery pack, plus of course lithium and the, and the metal iron to make them work. We don't actually know the battery chemistry of the new IBIS battery. They haven't disclosed that information, which is slightly concerning, I think. Number two, efficiency and range. The IBIS battery is claimed to be more efficient, leading to more range in an electric car. Specific details of the IBIS battery's chemistry characteristics have been provided, so we don't really know how the range will compare to a lithium ion phosphate battery. When I learn that information, I'll have a new video which I'll explain the changes there, or the comparison to be more specific. Number three, space savings. The significant advantage of the IBIS battery is it frees up space in the vehicle due to its integration of the inverter and charger functions. Could be more efficient as well as a result. Lithium ion phosphate batteries, like other lithium ion batteries, require a separate inverter and charger, which of course will occupy more space in the vehicle. Number four, applications. The IBIS battery is said to be suitable for smaller cars. This could address the issue of space constraints trying to fit big battery packs into smaller EVs. On the other hand, lithium ion phosphate batteries have improved in their energy density recently, especially with the new M3P batteries from CATL which use manganese in the battery to increase energy density by 10 to 15%. So whether or not the Stellantis battery, the IBIS battery will have more energy density, it's anyone's guess. By the time it's revealed in say one or two years, it's likely the new M3P batteries will have an additional 10% range boost over what they have today. Cost and market availability. This is the final point, and I think it matters the most. The IBIS battery is a newly developed technology. It's its actual cost and market availability will be fairly scarce at the start, meaning it won't really be affordable for them to produce until a few years into production. So we're looking at probably three, four, five years away, meaning it won't save Stellantis's bacon in the short term. They've got years of development work, production, you know, setting up factories, setting up production lines to go before any of that happens. This is a product probably will really start paying dividends by maybe 2028 onwards. So Stellantis have still got five years out in the cold in which they have to, you know, get through, try not to lose market share too much to their comp competition, which of course is Chinese car companies, BYD and Tesla. Overall, while the Ibis battery appears promising in terms of its efficiency and its space savings, its specific ad advantages over existing batteries or lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are quite often used in smaller cars because of their cost advantages, are unclear. Iris um, 
we don't know exactly what it is yet. We don't know how much it will really benefit EVs. Stellantis are being vague. They haven't revealed the actual battery chemistry. That is a little bit of a concern in my view. The other thing is they haven't even tested this in a real car yet. So we don't know how that's going to go. However, if it works, that's great news. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.